First of all, I would like to thank uh, Gilminas for the invitation over here. So it has been almost 20 years ago that I was here last time for Humboldt uh, Colleague. Uh, when I teach uh, physics and I teach uh, statistical mechanics, one of the things I'm always quite fascinated about is that uh, thermodynamics being very simple, very simple in the assumptions, and yet so powerful. And uh, 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 to some extent, my talk will address this a little bit. Uh, I will talk about systems which are believed to be non-terminalizing, uh, about uh, the, uh, an effect which is called many-body localization. Well, uh, so before I uh, get into it, let me uh, thank the people who did uh, the work. So first and foremost, uh, that's my uh, former PhD student, uh, Max Kiefer. And we had a very strong collaboration with uh, the group of Jesko Zirka in Canada at the University of Manitoba, and uh, also a lot of support by a postdoc of my group, uh, Rasmik uh, Unanya. Okay, so uh, what am I talking about if I, if I talk about uh, thermalization in an isolated system? If you have an isolated quantum system, the, the state, of course, uh, uh, if it's initially pure, it will stay pure. But what is meant with uh, thermalization is the following situation. So suppose you create uh, some uh, uh, initial state, and in here, uh, let's say, in a lattice, and you let evolve the system in time, and uh, after some long time, uh, you are looking into uh, properties of a local part of the system. So you subdivide uh, uh, the, the system in, in, in uh, 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 partitions, and you look at the reduced density operator of the subsystem, and then what you find uh, is that in very, very many cases, it behaves as if uh, it, it is described by a thermal state with some effective temperature. Now, uh, and, uh, oh, this is fancy. Uh, so the question I want to uh, address here is, uh, can there actually be generic quantum many-body systems which do not do this, which do uh, withstand this thermalization? And uh, uh, one system which for a long time and still is uh, seems to be uh, a case in point is this many-body localization. Uh, it does seem to show no particle transport. And actually what I would like to uh, 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 convince you today uh, with my talk is to have a little bit of a doubt that this is actually the case. Okay, so let me uh, start with uh, a system where we all know uh, which is uh, the localization does exist, and uh, this is for non-interacting systems. Uh, it, it is uh, the famous effect of Anderson localization. What is Anderson localization all about? Well, suppose you have uh, non-interacting particles, let that be polarized spin polarized fermions, uh, hopping on a lattice, 1D, 2D, three-dimensional lattice, uh, with nearest neighbor hopping, and you have some on-site potential, and this on-site potential is randomly chosen, uh, say, in a, with a box here, with a box distribution between values minus d half and plus d half. Now, what uh, Anderson showed is that in one and two spatial dimension, all eigenstates of this system uh, are localized, meaning that their wave function is actually uh, uh, scales like an ex exponent uh, with a distance from, from some uh, initial side, uh, side j0 uh, with some characteristic length xi. And in, in two and three dimension, actually, there's a certain threshold, but in, in one and 2D, uh, all of these states, uh, are, are, all of the states are uh, localized. And as a consequence of that, there are no delocalized states, therefore, there is no transport. There's absence of particle diffusion, as Anderson uh, called it. Now, this system of Anderson localization, in some sense, is not generic because uh, it says that there's no interactions. Uh, but I will come to the point of interactions in a minute. Well, uh, one of the things to uh, observe is that if you uh, uh, take these um, localized orbitals and look at the occupation numbers, uh, and you define the occupation numbers of these orbitals, say, with some, some uh, spin operator, uh, and uh, then you can show that the uh, uh, Hamiltonian, the Anderson Hamiltonian, has this simple form. So it's basically has an, uh, an extensive number of conserved quantities, which are the projections onto these Anderson orbitals. And that is a very important uh, a property of uh, these localized systems. Well, and there had been beautiful experiments just to, uh, uh, which demonstrated this, uh, one by Alain Aspe. He did not get the Nobel Prize for that, but, but uh, uh, that was a very beautiful experiment also. And, uh, uh, and there are uh, experiments in all sorts of systems, for example, an ultrasound in three-dimensional dimensional 
uh, um, collection of uh, uh, little marbles here. And um, so actually we, sta we uh, uh, started thinking, well, why not try this ourselves? Okay, so, so uh, suppose you have the following example. Uh, you take uh, an, a loudspeaker in the middle of a room uh, and, uh, and now uh, uh, put a lot of balloons inside this uh, room and uh, then these, these balloons will produce some disorder and then what you naively would expect that in one case uh, sound propagates quite nicely and in the other case it will just uh, be uh, localized. So as I said we, we tried this out because we thought this is fun and uh, the first thing we realized is that a three-dimensional room is, has a lot large volume. So you need, first of all, quite a number of balloons, and secondly, you need a, quite a, a, a amount of air to actually blow them up. And we did not have a compressor, unfortunately, so we had to do this all by, by hand. And then what we did is uh, we just uh, um, uh, uh, had a loudspeaker here, and people were walking around and, and listening to the, to the sound. And uh, then at uh, uh, some point, uh, we had uh, a gentleman playing the tuba. He's actually sitting in the, in the back and is going to give a, uh, a poster uh, later today on a completely different subject on the dy uh, dynamics of, of, of polarons. Uh, but anyway, so uh, unfortunately, we did not saw any localization. We did uh, 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 hear that, that the, uh, there were modulation of the, of the sound if you walk with a with a microphone to the room, but not really localization. Uh, okay, so it was fun anyway. But there's one important le uh, lesson to learn from that. And the important lesson to learn from that is that inelastic processes destroy interference and they destroy localization. And the same is generically true for interactions. So if you have uh, uh, interactions, then these uh, factorized Anderson orbitals will, will uh, couple uh, into this large, uh, vast uh, uh, space of Hilbert space, and, uh, and, the, and, and the action will drive you out from that. So generically, you would expect that interactions uh, actually kill localization. Uh, and uh, this has been the, uh, a subject of, of discussion already in the original work of Anderson. But Anderson and Fleischmann actually uh, argued that the, uh, in, in the 80s that the localization would survive the weak interactions. But uh, somehow these arguments were, were a little bit debated until roughly 2006. There was a very influential paper by Basco, Alina, and Altschuler who actually showed that the localization should survive higher order uh, perturbations. And then there came other uh, important contributions by Organesian and, and, and Hughes, who showed that, that there should be localization actually at all temperature uh, if the local Hilbert space is finite. So for example, if you look at spins or, or, or fermions. And so there seemed to be some sort of a consensus. And in fact, in 2013-14, there were a couple of papers uh, uh, who actually showed that many-body localization can be related to, uh, the, uh, to an extensive number of conserved quantities as local, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, local integrals of motion, sorry, yeah. Uh, well, until roughly 2019, and then some questions arise. And uh, so, but uh, before I get to that, let me quickly tell you what, uh, uh, what the uh, standard model of uh, uh, many body localization is. That is uh, one dimensional fermions hopping uh, on a lattice with some local disorder. So you have this clean system of just transport on, on, on a 1D lattice. You have this Anderson problem, meaning uh, you have random uh, uh, um, local potentials and there is some uh, next nearest neighbor interaction. And then what the, uh, what the prediction were is that if this uh, disorder uh, is above a certain threshold and the interaction is below a certain threshold, then you should uh, be in a phase where despite interaction, the system uh, is uh, localized. Well, and um, one, there's a, a, however, one important difference between Anderson uh, localization and many body localization, and this has to do with entanglement. Well, I, I told you that one important uh, uh, prerequisite of, of uh, localization is that there are local quantities, an uh, uh, extensive number of local quantities which, which commute with the many-body Hamiltonian. And indeed, in the many-body case, as in, in Anderson, you find this uh, uh, the simple Anderson Hamiltonian. But then interactions actually do make an effect. And the interaction lead to a, to a coupling of the uh, uh, projections of uh, the uh, orbitals over some distance, and this coupling here 
uh, falls off exponentially. And, uh, and, and an effect of, of this uh, exponential interaction is the following. Suppose uh, we start uh, with uh, these two um, uh, spins in a, uh, two uh, uh, fermions in a, in a superposition state, and then ask ourselves, uh, and initially this is factorized, and we ask ourselves how long will it take until they become entangled through this interaction? Well, just simple estimate, uh, you ask, uh, we, we simply ask what is the, uh, the, the phase of this uh, interaction uh, uh, turning uh, into pi? Well, since this interaction Hamiltonian scales, scales like exponent uh, of the distance, times time, it's easy to see that uh, uh, the uh, particles can become entangled uh, over distance x, uh, which scales logarithmically in time. Now, uh, and uh, uh, s since we know that the entanglement entropy, the so von Neumann entropy, is basically proportional to this uh, length over which particles can be entangled, we immediately see that in, in, in MBL, the total entropy is proportional to the logarithmic of time. So it's not constant, but it grows after a quench, uh, and, and it grows logarithmically, so very slow uh, in time. Uh, good. Now, one of the problems is that in, in, in experiments, uh, the, the entropy is often not easily accessible. Uh, however, if you have a system where there is particle conservation, so for example in, the, in this fermion model which I showed you, uh, the, the total number of fermions is conserved, you can show that the uh, uh, entropy uh, can be decomposed in the number part and the configuration part. And the number, all what the number part is basically uh, is, is asking the, the question, what is the probability of finding a certain number of particles in your subsystem? And that produces this number entropy. And this number entropy, uh, and, and, and if there is some transport, you can immediately see that the number entropy uh, uh, becomes uh, larger than, than, than zero, because uh, now, now there will be some states which, which uh, are uh, um, extended over the boundary of the two uh, partitions. And the nice thing about the, uh, um, the uh, number entropy is that you can actually observe this in experiments. So this is here, this uh, famous quantum gas microscope in the group of uh, um, Markus Greiner and Harvard. And what they actually can do is they can have a snapshot and look at a certain uh, subsystem and actually do a counting, a full counting of uh, occupied and non-occupied sites. And this gives them uh, probability distribution uh, that a certain subsystem, let's say the square here, uh, ha has a certain number of, of particles, and from that they can actually calculate the, the number entropy. And that's what they did, and uh, there's this famous paper in 2019 uh, where they looked at a at um, many-body localized system, and they saw uh, that the, the number entropy after some initial grow uh, seemed to saturate, and exact diagonalization uh, uh, seem to uh, uh, show this as well. Well, if you look at this curve a little bit closer, you would argue, is this really constant? And what I would like to convince you today is it's not. And there's a good reason for that, that it is not constant. What is the reason? Well, we have shown in uh, this paper in 2020 that if you have non-interacting particles, there is a strict relation between the von Neumann entropy and the number entropy. So you can actually bound the uh, von Neumann entropy by an exponent of the number entropy on both sides. And uh, in fact, if you look at uh, Anderson uh, 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 system, uh, you find this is perfectly uh, um, uh, this is perfectly in agreement with, this, with these bounds. Uh, so the blue curve here is the numerical calculation of, of the uh, number entropy, and the other curves are the upper and the lower bound. So, uh, 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 sorry, this is the of the entropy, the entanglement entropy, and these are the uh, upper and lower bounds from the from the number entropy. So it's uh, in, in non-interacting systems there seem to be a strict relation, and what this relation actually says is that the number entropy and the von Neumann entropy are related to each other uh, through a logarithmic um, uh, uh, relation. But if that's the case, then we have a little bit of a problem. Because in a localized system, we would actually expect that the number entropy is bounded, because there should be no transport of particles. So, the, uh, so 
Uh, and if the number entropy is bounded, then the system is truly localized. However, if the number entropy is unbounded, uh, well, then we have to face the fact that, that uh, uh, there, are, uh, uh, the, the, there is some ultra-slow uh, 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 transport of particles and the system is delocalized. So if we take the, um, the important property of MBL, namely that the entanglement entropy is uh, after a quench scales logarithmically as a function of time, and we believe that this relation between number entropy and, and uh, uh, entanglement entropy still holds in an interacting system, then we would expect to see a double logarithmic growth of, so very slow, but still growth of the, of the number entropy. And in fact, if we do, we did uh, numerics uh, with exact diagonalization on, on uh, uh, small systems, the predicted, by that time, predicted uh, uh, critical uh, um, the strengths of, of the disorder where the, the system should go into a MBL phase uh, is in, in our units 15. Little side remark, as a function of time, this was rescaled upwards, but I'll come to that in a, in a, in a minute. Uh, so we found that there's a perfect lock-lock scaling of the, of the number entropy. Well, if you go... Uh, um, a little bit higher, 17.5, still lock-lock plot. If you even go uh, uh, further, then the, the lock-lock plot uh, uh, is still a perfect fit. So uh, it seems to uh, uh, hold that there is a double logarithmic increase of the number entropy. So therefore, this uh, picture of MBL that while entropy scales logarithmically, the number entropy is constant, is apparently not uh, for at least from our simulations, is, is not violated. And uh, instead, we see this double logarithmic growth. Now, <coughs> uh, obviously, you would argue, well, if I make the disorder stronger and stronger and stronger, then at some point, the particle transport has to cease. There's no way that a particle can still hop. So therefore, uh, uh, if we look at this relation between the two entropies, we would expect that this prefactor here uh, does depend on the, um, on the disorder strengths. And in fact, uh, that is uh, uh, what we see. So if you crank up, if you, this is still the thermal regime, so below the, uh, uh, the uh, um, MBL threshold, uh, we see that the prefactor is on the order of 0 0.5. But then if you go deep in the, in the MBL phase, then this prefactor uh, gets smaller and smaller. But the question is, does it actually make a jump? So is there a phase transition? Then we would expect this prefactor to, at some point, just have a non-analytic uh, uh, behavior. And uh, the result is, no, it's not. Uh, so there is a, uh, there is a, a transition. Uh, and this transition is uh, a, from a constant into a power law, and, uh, and, but we do not see uh, any evidence of a, of a phase transition. Now, of course, you can imagine that uh, uh, after we published these results, we got a lot of uh, feedback um, and uh, criticism, which is always good because it's stimulating. And uh, so the first uh, question was, well, maybe the, the critical disorder strength is actually higher than expected. And uh, so what's going on, what's going to happen if, if, the, if you crank up this? Well, we check this and uh, all the way up to this order 40 in units of the hopping, right? This is a huge potential difference as, as compared to the hopping. Uh, uh, the the uh, double logarithmic uh, growth still is fine. Then another well-taken argument was to say, well, you only can simulate finite systems. So if you can only simulate finite systems, then you may by accident uh, get uh, a disorder region which is rare and which ruins after averaging ruins your your uh, um, uh, 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 entropy calculations. So, well, we also checked for that and uh, took out the the rare cases, and still this uh, uh, this behavior holds. Now, how about the particle dynamics? Well, so this here is a system. Uh, where we have in this, uh, uh, which is uh, an Anderson localized system, we have initially six particles in one partition, and then we ask ourselves what is going on as, as a function of time, and then you see after some time uh, t1 the distribution uh, broadens, and you get a little bit of, of uh, contributions here of four and six particles, but then even if you wait until infinity, uh, it will no longer spread. But now, how is how is it different in the MBL case? Well, initially, we again start with, with this uh, peak distribution. And just as a reference, this is the Anderson localization distribution at t equal infinity. Uh, MBL 
after some time T1 is about uh, 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 the same as the Anderson for, for infinite time. But then if you continue uh, uh, in, in time, you realize that there is a very, very small but growing probability of having uh, uh, more than just one particle moving to the left and to the right. Okay, so let me come to a conclusion. I, th I hope I have uh, uh, convinced you that there's a le at least a little bit of a doubt whether uh, the uh, uh, canonical system of uh, many-body localization uh, does indeed mean that uh, particles are localized. And this is, was based on the uh, observation that the number entropy and the von Neumann entropy are actually related by a logarithmic uh, uh, relation. So what uh, we believe is actually the, the case is that uh, um, the, um, there is a very, very slow increase in very, uh, of number entropy and therefore spread of particles in the, uh, uh, in the MBL phase. Good. So just to uh, put this on, a, on one slide, at least according to our numerics, MBL uh, does uh, not uh, uh, do show the absence of particle localization. There is no phase transition in this uh, prefactor of, of, of the two as a function of, of this order. Um, and we have shown that uh, the increase of number entropy is not due to rare realizations or just single particle hopping. Uh, we have actually also looked at finite size effects. I haven't shown this to you, but if you're interested, I can show you later. And, uh, and uh, uh, this uh, increase of the entropy suggests that there's a subdiffuses particle transport. We have also do, uh, uh, looked a little bit at the, at the validity of these effective models. I didn't talk about it, but again, uh, there are some arguments which uh, seem to question the existence of these localized uh, orbitals. And then uh, the bottom line of this is the system might be thermal after all. And with this, I thank you uh, for your attention. And you notice that I, uh, even though I announced the Technical University Kaiserslautern, I used the right uh, logo because we came larger now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have questions? Yes, one of the very back. Michael, so there were some ideas uh, that the breakdown of MBL comes from avalanches. That's some kind of metallic region that now start to increase. Do you guys see evidence for this in your numerics? So you, what? Uh, okay. So, so yeah, I have to say that that the, the sizes which we can calculate uh, with exact generalization are limited to 24, 26, something like this. And the reason for that is because you have to go to extremely long times to even be able to say uh, the double logarithmic increase in time, and we have to do. Uh, sometimes quart quarter uh, precision uh, uh, numerics uh, because it really depends on these very small uh, small numbers so no so the short answer is no we have not uh, the, the we uh, intentionally try to go in deep into the mbl phase and not uh, in at the transition point uh, and, but the only thing is that if you can i can i get the slides back Yes, uh, if you uh, look at the at, at the history, well, okay, so this is all the debate. I switch this over. There was an interesting uh, uh, symposium which was called MBL Dead on Alive, but okay, uh, never. What I wanted to show is this curve here. Uh, the uh, prediction of the critical uh, uh, disorder strengths for MBL until 2019 in our units was about 14, 15 or so. Uh, uh, but since then, it, it, it cranked up. So, so the, the question: Are we really deep in the in the MBL phase or not? Is depends on what you believe is the critical disorder. So, but the short answer is no. Well, as as you see, this is infinity. So there are some predictions which say it's infinite. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Next question. Yes. Thank you very much. So uh, you said in the MBL phase you might have sort of increase of this number entropy. Would you still call it MBL? Or do you think it would it could also just uh, reach the I, thermal value uh, finally? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, um, that's that's actually an interesting question and a not completely clear question. Does the 
does the entropy reach uh, uh, the completely mixed uh, uh, state? Presumably it does not, um, but I can't really answer it. And, and concerning the name, I, I just uh, stick what people call it. So I didn't invent it. No. Okay, let's have a chance for last question for this session. Yes, please. So do you think that the experiment by Markus Greiner showing this residual increase is due to this double logarithmic or there are 100 other reasons it could happen? I, uh, I mean, to be honest, there could be 100 other, other reasons why, why that is the case. Uh, uh, it would be, I mean, sure, I would, I would la love to say yes, uh, but, but that would probably be not quite fair. Okay, thank you.